Uh, thank you, Jim, and thank you everyone for uh, for tuning in to have a listen to this story. Um, uh, back to gold. This is a um, this it truly was a hidden gem. Um, uh, it's, it sits undercover, which has transported profile um, 150 kilometres to the east of Kalgoorlie. Uh, we didn't know it was there. No one knew it was there until um, sort of 2017. We got first uh, diamond core into it, and I really understood the geometry and the potential of of uh, the mineralisation that's sitting under undercover out here. So. Uh, really glad to tell the story. Um, next slide, please. Skip through, please. Um, so the reason uh, we're excited about this discovery is they don't come along very often. Um, here, the Kalgoorlie district is, is pretty mature. There's been a lot of exploration over the last 30 years um, with, you know, with drilling rigs and, and modern day geochemistry. Uh, this thing just was hidden out there. Uh, we've taken it from a point of discovery to a current resource base of 1.1 million ounces. Uh, of gold, and we, we only report what sits inside um, a, a constrained shell uh, generated by the engineers. Um, so we think they're quite high confidence ounces. That, um, that's carried through through uh, a 74 percent of them being in the indicated category. So really important discovery. We know it can make it bigger. Um, we had a previous life in West Africa that's that uh, we've been divesting over the journey. Uh, and we, it's left us in a really good cash position. Uh, we burn about uh, a million and a half a quarter on exploration and, and building the project. Um, but you can see we've got plenty of cash to do that uh, work. And, and once we had the million ounces in hand, it was um, quite clear that this thing had uh, commercial um, possibilities. So we've pushed on and doing some quite detailed study work. Um, and I'll talk to that in, in a little bit coming up. Um, but regardless of all of the value that can be added through the study work and the exploration rig, we know we're in pretty good shape um, in terms of relative valuations per ounce uh, for in pit constrained ounces in this part of the world. And the reason we're good value is this part of the world is the very best um, place to, to go and find a new discovery. We're, we're a short drive from Kalgoorlie and, and everything that's needed. Next slide, please. I won't spend time on this. We're in good financial shape, obviously. Um, the capital structure has been preserved quite well by, uh, the, by divestments. Um, so actually, uh, we just put out our annual report yesterday. We've had four consecutive years of accounting profits, which is quite unusual for a company that's building resource base. Um, uh, but uh, you can see that we've, in the share price, uh, we've been slowly um, adding value to, to our shareholders. Um, those are predominantly guys that have been with us since we started exploring West Africa and have stayed with us for the uh, for the Rebecca discovery, you can see um, you know, what's happened to our share price since then. Next slide, please. Uh, I'm an exploration geologist, been doing this for a long time, uh, and um, really well supported by Tony James, who uh, knows everyone in Kalgoorlie. Um, he's a mining engineer. He knows how to, to wrap financial parameters around what we've found. It's really important to us. Uh, Roger Steiner Price um, is, uh, is really well known in Perth um, corporate and, and legal circles. Next slide, please. Now, this is where I start to come in. I obviously said it's a great place to be. It's on a haul road, well, not a haul road, but a, a, a mine support road that goes out to the east of Kalgoorlie and goes all the way through it to Tropicana. So it's a nice all weather road. Uh, it's about a two hour drive. Um, we're at the southern end of a belt of rocks called the Laverton Tectonic Zone. There's more than 30 million ounces of gold uh, to the north end of us around Laverton. Uh, we knew it was a good place to explore. Uh, and we knew that exploration was uh, was underdone, I suppose, uh, when we took on the project, um, and and that's come to pass with the discoveries we've made. Now, in that figure on the right hand side, that's a an aeromagnetic uh, image. Uh, we knew about the Duke and Duchess um, mineralisation; it was already there in the database we inherited. Uh, but we most importantly we knew that going north of Duchess, uh, the was more and more transported cover and less and less. Uh, sensible exploration work uh, and that was the opportunity and sure enough uh, we've discovered the Rebecca deposit itself um, up in that north uh, east part of the tenement group it's bigger it's better it's higher grade it's got great geometries um, it's got 840,000 ounces in itself of uh, uh, of gold inside this optimized shell we know that it's, it's a well, it's a plus million ounce system in its own right um, finding that means we can find more, and since um, since then we've started to uh, find some really nice gold at a place called Cleo, out to the uh, out to the west. 
and you can see some uh, plenty of exploration targets ahead of us to go drilling for more. So it's delivered what it, it, we, we thought it could do um, when we first picked up the project. Next slide, please. Uh, now I'm going to unpick uh, the Rebecca deposit a little bit because this is where the real value um, lies. Uh, a couple of figures here. Um, the, the, the colourful line on the bottom left, that's a, a slice along the length of the, of the block model. So all the coloured shapes there are mineralised blocks that the um, resource that geologist has given us. You can see that um, a, there's a black line that encompasses that. That's the base of the pit the engineers say uh, is commercially viable. Um, and we know there's 840,000 ounces inside that pit. Um, we, uh, I talked to what happens below the pit, um, but inside the pit shell itself, you can see on the right-hand side, um, the, the endowment inside that pit shell sits comfortably between 2,000 and 4,000 ounces per vertical metre uh, once you get down through the transported profile. Uh, and that is maintained all the way down to the point where there's just no more drill information. So what that says is it's... It's what we, we know about in the top 300 metres will very likely reproduce again in the next 300 metres. So it's a very serious goal system. Next slide, please. Um, a couple of slices. Uh, we put out a lot of cross sections, but these are really good way to look at the, the deposit and how they perform in, in, um, in, 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 in cross section view. Um, you can see the grey shapes on all our cross sections are the, this hypothetical pit shell. You can see there's quite nice geometries involved. Uh, you don't have to squint too hard to see that the strip ratios might be uh, relatively tame. Um, we're stripping for the most part, except in the southern part of the pit, which is um, a slice on the right-hand side. This is where things steepen up and, and, and us geologists get excited. There's a lot more gold in these steep zones, um, typically 10 to 30 metres true width and typically in the three to five grams per tonne. Um, and uh, there's not many pits around operating in WA where you can get that material in a pit floor. Uh, and this is what um, drives this project forward. And I think it's actually quite um, robust under different gold price environments because of this high grade system. Um, next slide, please. Uh, yep, yeah, again, uh, with the exploration hat on, um, this is where we apply the drill rigs. Um, the top right hand image there is another slice along the, the length of the system. Uh, and what you can see, I won't go into them individually, but it's, there's a lot of intercepts along the whole 1.8 kilometres below what we know that have got all grade um, hits. Uh, and the real prize is to keep populating that um, density of information. And somewhere in there, there's going to be more of the intercepts, like uh, is the stick of core there. That's the part of the Jennifer structure itself. Uh, intercepts similar uh, you know, along the lines of... Um, of five grams per tonne over 20, 30, 40 metres um, downhole widths. They're exceptional in, in, uh, intercepts. That means that one day, uh, it's very easy to, to imagine a, a point where you've, um, uh, uh, during or towards the end of the open pit mining, you move to an underground set. Uh, now, what we've been doing also in this year and it's been important is um, we've been adding um, ounces inside this hypothetical pit shell that didn't previously exist. So the colourful areas on the bottom left uh, image uh, were unclassified um, mineralisation, wasn't drilled uh, to a high enough density. Uh, what we found so far this year, luckily, is that A, there's better grade than we expected, and B, there's more gold than we expected. Uh, and this, in, in effect, this is a free kick um, for extra ounces inside a pit that was um, you know, hypothetically already dug. So that's going to be great for economics. Next slide, please. Uh, right, now this is um, just a spin of the of the, uh, the leapfrog model. So this is all drilling. It gives you an idea of the shapes of what we're, we're looking at and talking to. Uh, you see it's west dipping up in the north end as we spin around in the central part of the pit. It's quite complicated where, in effect, the loads just wrap around each other and you get three looks at the same surface in the middle part of the pit. Lots of color there. Um, you can see there's some colour on the drill strings that haven't got any blocks. There are new drilling. So we know that we can expand gold mineralisation into those areas. So this system is very much live and well. Next slide, please. Right, now, um, that's, that's Rebecca, four kilometres away to the south. Uh, very uh, easy trucking distance uh, is Duchess and Duke. These things are very straightforward, really. There's, they're, they're slabs of mineralisation that either um, dip to the west or vertical. 
individually they get up to 20 metres uh, uh, true width, not high grade, but really nice geometry as you can see again that there's potentially a reasonably low strip ratio in these places. Um, live to strike in places, definitely live to depth. You can see the block model just going off hand uh, down the bottom right. Next slide, please. Uh, Duke is a very similar thing. So this time it's just sitting vertically. Uh, it's a, a really uh, consistent slab of one to one and a half gram um, uh, grade gold. Um, I wish it was a bit longer, but it's, uh, it is what it is. But certainly at some point you can picture this sort of material driving four kilometers up the road and uh, being tipped into a plant that might be up to closer to Rebecca. Next slide. Uh, now with the, with the ounces we have in hand and the, and the finances we've got available, um, we've taken the opportunity to get um, some of the best um, brains in the business uh, involved in building the packs of technical information we need to understand how uh, this thing might perform financially into the future. Um, uh, and so that's been collected since we released our, uh, our resource update. Um, so we've had metallurgical drilling, we've had hydro hydrological drilling, uh, flora and fauna surveys, et cetera, et cetera. So that work is ongoing. Um, it's building individual packs of information that our engineers will put together and understand how best to, um, to model up a, a financial uh, mine life uh, around the, uh, this deposit. We know for a fact it's going to be led initially by the Rebecca deposit up in the northeast. Next slide, please. Uh, this is, my, this is in my ballpark, uh, the exploration rigs. We've been going all year with the rigs. We'll keep going. There's um, uh, plenty to do. Uh, this is just an example of a slice through the three deposits that we know of. Um, and you can see that we've got six kilometres to play with just in this like, section. Um, we have mineralisation in our shells. We have mineralisation that's starting to emerge elsewhere in the paddock. And it's particularly the the undercover country from Duchess to Rebecca that that's, um, holds the, the real upside. Um, and it's a matter of just systematically pushing through and doing the technical work and, and drilling the holes. So I can see that work going for some time and, and we never know when the next um, you know, uh, ounce position might turn up um, with that drill rig. Next slide, please. Uh, so just wrapping it all up, um, not many 1.1 million ounce uh, deposits sit out there in the gold fields that are I suppose unencumbered, we don't have a big brother. Um, it's a new discovery. We're not having to, to dig and truck from multiple old pits. It's a really excellent start. We've got plenty of, of cash and we've got plenty of work to do on the study side and with the drill rigs. Uh, we think we're good value at the minute and we know that we can add value through um, these works as we go forward. Uh, I think that's all I have to say. I look forward to any questions, thank you. Thanks, Nick. It, it really is a, a, a great gold story. Um, and, and so with that cash position, it, um, is it hard to get exploration rigs and, and can you really crank things up? I mean, you said you're burning a, a million a quarter, but with $36 million in cash, can you really put your foot down out there? Yeah, I get asked this question a lot. We, we, we have um, uh, one to two rigs going at any time uh, with a good team out there. Um, and the, the, the problem I think it's for us is not so much the, the ability to drill, um, it's more the ability to understand what the drill holes are telling us in terms of the delays in the assay turnaround. Um, and uh, the, the nature of this deposit, because the, the loads, although they're quite wide, they can bend and twist through shape, through space. Um, uh, we are best served to spend that money when we know what sort of assay we have in hand. Uh, and we don't know that until we've got the results back. So we're a little bit um, limited by that, but certainly we're looking to add more machines and more geologists to um, to the work because we've got plenty of it to, to go on with. And a question here. Um, so at the Rebecca deposits, do these systems typically continue at depth? And would you expect grades to sustain underground mining uh, beyond an open pit? Uh, the uh, first part of the question is most definitely they're open to depth. We haven't seen any reason why they um, deplete uh, going downwards. Uh, and as showed in, the, in that ounce per vertical metre slide, um, uh, it pretty much stops dead on the, on the base of knowledge. Um, uh, can we get uh, commercial grades down there? Well, I think the, the structure that we speak to called Jennifer, um, I haven't got the actual ounce position for that surface by itself, but I imagine it's about 250,000 ounces and it's probably in the 
the high threes or low fours. Um, and um, that at 10, 15, 20 metres true width is most definitely an underground position. Um, and if we can string a bunch of those together, then this um, could be a, you know, a very long lived operation underground. And uh, this question here, you appear to be mining next to a lake or a flood pan. Is there any uh, extra environmental issues there at the moment? No, we don't, uh, we don't impact um, the lake boundary at all. Uh, and um, the, the intention is to, to just not encroach on it. We'll be doing everything um, that we need in terms of infrastructure out to the west. We've got plenty of open space out to the west side of the, of the mine itself. Um, yeah, no, we don't, um, we don't, we don't, especially don't own any of the lake, um, so it's not really something we encroach on. Okay, and, and just finally, can you give us an idea of the, the timeline moving forward? What investors? Uh, the study, yeah, the study works are you know, in progress, and um, some of these are long, again, some of the delays out of labs and things, they're, they're long lead time margins, um, but we should have the lion's share of that work in hand and reported by the end of the first quarter next year. Um, uh, so yeah, metallurgy and and, uh, and the seasonal environment survey work. That's the the two um, uh, you know, items that drag on a bit. But by by the end of next quarter, we should have all those information packs in hand, and we start to cobble them together and understand how this works in terms of a of a feasibility study.